Hi, today I'm going to talk about something that has been keeping me pretty busy for the last six months. This is a, a throttle for model railroads. And in this episode, I'll explain more about what it is and dive into some of the details and explain why I'm talking about it. Welcome to another episode. <laughs> So about two years uh, ago, maybe longer, maybe two and a half years ago, I started working on an idea for a throttle for model railroads. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with model railroads, <coughs> um, you have a train that's on the railroad and you're trying to operate the train. And there are many different solutions to how you operate the train. But, you know, one of them is to have a handheld throttle that allows you to operate the, the train. You, often these are uh, radio controlled, but sometimes they're actually plugged into the front of the, the layout with a, a physical connection. Uh, so, for example, here's another throttle that uh, has a, a cord, and you have to plug this cord into the layout before you can use the throttle. Now, until recently, most of these throttles were using proprietary radios. And uh, about two and a half years ago, I had the idea of making a throttle using Wi-Fi as the way to connect to the layout. Uh, since then, other companies have done the same thing. Uh, and then about uh, six months ago, I teamed up with <coughs> a group of people working with train control systems, otherwise known as TCS, to build a commercial throttle. And uh, we're going to actually make two throttles. One is uh, based on their design, and then the other one is based on uh, my design. And in some other videos, I'll get into the differences. But the, the, the short version is that uh, the one I want to work on, or was working on at the time, is a, a smaller one than this one. OK, so now what I'm going to do is we'll head over to a test track and a setup where I have everything connected. And I'm going to go into more detail about this um, throttle. And then in other videos, I'm going to talk about the design aspects of the case, uh, because I designed this case uh, based on a design that they had before. This is the setup I have. You can see I have right here, this is a Digitrax Zephyr command station. It's a DCS-50, which is um, uh, the original Zephyr. Here we've got the throttle. And the throttle is going to be communicating to this command station through the computer via this guy here. So this little box is called a local buffer made by RR circuits. On the computer, I have JMRI. So JMRI is talking to this command station over USB via that box. The throttle is then communicating to the computer via Wi-Fi. So the signal from here is going that way into the next room. I think it's about, uh, I don't know, 30 feet to the, uh, the Wi-Fi router. And then the signal comes back to the computer, uh, and that's how we're controlling the, the train. So let's go in close to the throttle and have a look. First thing I'm going to do is turn it on. Now, we have a developer version on here right now. So when I turn it on, it actually goes to a screen that requires me to uh, press another key. I'm going to zoom on in on this so you can see the, the startup sequence. So if you see there, it searches for it. With, it was pretty quick, but it was searching for the Wi-Fi. It found the Wi-Fi. And then it was searching for the command station and found that. Now it's connected. And you can see that because, whoops, sorry bumped one of the cameras. You can see it because up here we've got a signal strength meter. The number down below is, is uh, there for us as developers, so that won't be on the final version. Okay, at this point uh, I've got the track power on and JMRI is running. So what I want to do is select a loco, which I do by pushing this button here. And on the screen, I'll zoom in so you can see that a little bit better, we have a list of the locomotives. Uh, right now, in JMRI, I just have two locomotives, and that's because, well, I only have two sound-equipped locomotives. One of them is, uh, they're both uh, narrow-gauge locomotives, HON3. So what I'm going to do is um, 
I'll zoom out so you can see a little bit more of what I'm doing. You can either, either use the wheel or the arrow, so I'm just going to use the arrow. Select 346, which is what's on the, the layout, and then I'll press the Select Soft key. At this point, uh, we have the locomotive acquired, and so if I change the speed, you can see that it's starting to move. Now, to make it more fun, I'm going to press the 8 key, and that turns the sound on. So now I'll change the direction, and you can hear the clunk of changing the direction, and you can see now it's working. There are a couple other things uh, I want to show you. Uh, so this main window, let me zoom in, now shows some more information. Uh, the first thing it shows is, uh, you can see at the top, is the name of the locomotive. Now this is the name that I got from JMRI. Then we have the direction, which is right there, and current speed. And then we have some soft keys that uh, tell you other things you can do. So this row of buttons at the top are the soft keys, which means we'll be able to change them. So as a user, eventually, you'll be able to choose what you have shown there. The first soft key is recall. So that allows me to switch back to another locomotive, which, by the way, I don't have. So I'll go back to 346. If you're wondering why the text size changed on here, it's because uh, we only have so much width. And uh, this name, DNRGW346, cannot fit across the entire width of the screen. So we had to drop down to a smaller size to show all of it. Okay, then we have here two buttons enabled horn and bell. Obviously that's not a horn, but uh, it's a long explanation and I won't get into details, but the meaning of that particular key is, is something that's relevant to the throttle, not the engine. And then we have bell. And you can see that turns the bell on. You also notice that a number one appeared here. That's how you can see which uh, function keys are on. So if I press, let me turn the bell off. I can actually go down here and turn the bell off with uh, the one key. And as you can see, now it's off. And there are, there are other functions as well. So I'll scroll out. So like function five. Sounds like filling water. Not really sure, but we can find out pretty easily. So I'll scroll back in. And I'm going to press this button here, which is the, the menu button. And then I'm going to select uh, Loco Functions. And that will allow us to find out what 5 was. F5 is, huh, FX8 Lite. Or was it, uh, maybe it was a different key I pressed. Anyway, these uh, are the different values that came from JMRI. So I may not actually have the correct names in here. Uh, because I haven't looked up the decoder information and programmed everything in here. A couple of other things. Uh, as I mentioned, this is speed here. Oops, uh, when you're not in the menu. Uh, but you can also change speed using the arrow keys. So this moves up one speed step at a time. So we're just barely crawling. <coughs> and we can go down as well. These move by larger speed increments. And then we have uh, direction. And then this is shift. So right now we're showing functions, the state of functions uh, 1 through 9. But if we press the shift key, we can see 1 through, uh, sorry, 10 through 19. And if we shift again, it's 10 through 28 or 29, however many you have. So that's uh, a quick introduction to the throttle as it stands today. So some people have mentioned that um, our throttle looks a little bit like the NCE throttle. Here's an NCE throttle and uh, you can see that, yeah, there are some similarities, but they are different in uh, many ways. Uh, similarities are things like the keys uh, around the speed control and the speed control. But the screen is very different. Uh, the NCE throttle is a lot longer. Uh, it's also wider, and 
this has a nice uh, curved profile, so it, it feels really good in the hand. Whereas this has a very flat profile, so it doesn't feel as good in the hand. I mean, it, it works just fine. And then the other thing is, you know, it requires more moving of your thumb to get all, to all the controls. Whereas here, the controls are closer together, so it's a lot more convenient to move around and get to the different controls that you use a lot when you're running the engine. Of course, if you want to use function keys, you have to move down a little bit. Now, uh, this case is a 3D printed case. It's a prototype case. We had these made at uh, Shapeways. So these, I believe, are SLS, which means uh, <coughs> uh, laser sintering, selective laser sintering. And I believe the material is uh, nylon. Because they're 3D printed, you know, they're, they bow a little bit, and we only have uh, four screws in the back. In the final version, we will have six screws so that we hold the two halves firmly together. Uh, and here you can see the two batteries in the back. We chose to go with uh, regular batteries uh, rather than built-in rechargeable batteries for the simple reason that if batteries go dead during an operating session, you can quickly change them and be back up and running. Here I'm using a rechargeable 1500 milliamp uh, nickel metal hydride batteries, but you can use any AA batteries that you want. So what you've just seen is a project that's been keeping me busy for the last six months or so. Uh, this is a hobby project for me, and everything that I do on YouTube is about uh, hobby projects. Um, I have too many hobbies. This is also a joint effort. Uh, I've been working closely with Stuart and Balaj. They live in different parts of the world, um, as well as with uh, TCS. So Stuart is in uh, Wisconsin, Balaj is in Switzerland, TCS is in Pennsylvania. You can see it's a distributed effort. Uh, but it's really a lot of fun to work on, and those are all really great people to work with. When I started somewhere around the middle of the summer, uh, I already had my own project, and what we decided to, to do is to merge the two projects together. Now, TCS, Stuart, and Balage already had a lot of what you saw here. And so I've simply added support for Y throttle to what they had, because what they had was focused just on LCC, which means it supports their command station. And uh, John Forsyth of TCS did a video recently about their command station, and I'll have a link below. Uh, the case. As I mentioned, I'm going to be doing a few more videos about that design and uh, some history behind it. Anyway, thanks again for watching. I realize this is a very different video than my other videos. Uh, please let me know if you like it, if you'd like to see more. If you don't like it, you don't want to see more, that's fine as well. Uh, as always, uh, please subscribe. If you want to receive notifications of when I publish a new video, click on the bell icon below and YouTube will send you an email. Thanks again. Bye.